What is up my crafty friends? My name is Carrie and I want to welcome you back to my channel today. Whether it's your first visit or you're a returning subscriber, I want to say welcome my friend. Y'all, I'm in my craft room today because it is time to paint. Y'all know how much I love painting and if you've been following on my channel, you know that I have just recently launched my brand new set of wood cutouts. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll be sure to put a link to my website down below so you can check it out. So the very first one that we're going to paint today is going to be our cute little gnome. Look how adorable he is. I've got it all lined so you know exactly where to paint. But first, before we start painting, we've got a few things we've got to add to him. So your kit is going to come with two of these little circles, and it's also going to come with some little hands. So if you want to find out how to put your gnome together, as well as paint all of his 13 accessories, keep watching this video. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that would mean the world to me. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to turn on all those notifications if you don't want to miss anything I've got coming your way. Now, in addition to the gnome set, I also have a truck set. Now, the truck set comes with 12 wood cutouts, one for each season. Y'all, this one is super duper cute as well. So, if you want to check out that video, I'll put a link to it down below. So, that's enough talking, y'all. Let's go paint our gnome. Now, before we start painting, we need to put our gnome together. But first, let's take a look at what is going to come in your kit. You've got your gnome, you've got these two little circles here, and you've also got his two little hands as well as his 13 accessories. Y'all, I took great care in designing all of his accessories that a couple of them could even be used for multiple seasons. So it's totally up to you if you want to paint them as I'm suggesting or if you want to think outside the box and paint them ever how you want to for yourself. So let's take a look at what we've got. I know some of these are quite obvious what they are, but then you've got some weird ones like this. So this is his little bonus accessory. This is his cupcake. We've got our snowflake for January, our heart for February, our four leaf clover for March, our Easter egg for April, Mayflowers. We've got June ice cream, July, this is gonna be our firework. August, now you can either do this as a watermelon as I had planned, or it would also be cute to use it for like a lemon or a lime or any other thing that comes in this shape. This is going to be our acorn. Now I plan for this one to be a pumpkin, but you could also paint it to be an apple or whatever you want it to be, but it is designed to be a pumpkin. Now this one does sort of look like a little weird looking hat, but I promise you it's not. Y'all, this is going to be our turkey for Thanksgiving. And last but not least, our cute little gingerbread man. Isn't he adorable? Today I'm going to be playing around with some brand new Arteza products and the first one we're going to be using is these brand new miniature paint brushes. We don't have a whole lot of minute details on the gnome, but we will on the truck when we start painting it. But that's a different video that you'll have to come back for. But I am going to be using these on some of the details because I, I know I want to use those when I stripe the ice cream cone and then when I paint some of the other details, especially on the little gingerbread man, because they will have really small, fine little details. But these are awesome. Look how pointed these bristles are. These are going to be great. I'm super excited to play around with those. The next thing we're going to be using are some of these acrylic markers. These are brand new and I'm super excited because they're water-based, they're UV resistant, they dry super duper quick, but most of all, they are super bright colors. Look at all the beautiful colors in there. Let's go ahead and pop this open real quick. Y'all look at this. These colors just make my creative heart happy. I cannot wait to use those. Let's take a look at the tips on some of these. Now these are acrylic markers, so it's like a paint pen. But look at the fine tip on it. Isn't that awesome? I'm so excited to use these. I haven't even brought down the color on those, so I'll be sure to show you how to do that too. I'm also going to be playing around with some of these classic hues. These are brand new, and look at these pretty colors. Y'all, this watermelon pink is going to be perfect when we start painting that watermelon. I can't wait to use that. 
These are some more brand new colors. These are actually outdoor acrylic colors. They're water-based, scuff resistant, and they also self-seal. But you can use them for indoor or outdoor. So I'm going to be pairing those all together with the different paint pens and the also the Classic Hues set. So let's take a look at some of these colors. Y'all know how much I love turquoise. Like that is my, that's my color. So I really think I'm going to be using this Persian green to paint my gnome. Isn't that pretty? I love that color. So let's go ahead and pick out our color palette. So I'm going to use the Persian green for the gnome itself. I'm going to need probably some marshmallow white. Because we're going to paint the gnome first. Let's pull out some Battleship Gray. I'm probably also going to need some black. And the Outdoor Colors comes with a charcoal black as well. Aren't those pretty? Now I do need sort of like a skin tone color for his little nose. And this one looks pretty good. It's called Papaya Whip. I love the name of that color. Now let's take a look at the Classic Hues set. I think the peach is a little bit too peachy. I might need some cream too. This is like an off-white, so I'm just going to put this over here too. Okay, I'm not going to use the paint pens just yet, so I'm going to move a lot of this out of the way. Okay, so again, we've got 15 of these super pointy miniature paint brushes. Look at that. That one's going to be fantastic for lining around our little gnome here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out. I'll leave the tops off. They do come with these little reusable caps, so be sure to hang on to those. That way your brushes will stay nice and pointed. And I might need maybe a few more. This one's a little bit smaller. This is a spot brush. This one here was a liner brush. And I think that's all I'm going to use for now. So I'm just going to lay these to the side as well. Okay, so here is our color palette all laid out. This little gnome is going to be so stinking cute. I cannot wait to show y'all what he looks like painted. But before we do our painting, we've got to put him together. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about what he's made out of. He's made out of a quarter inch birch plywood. So that means that this is not some little cheap flimsy piece of material. This is going to be a great solid wood piece of material. This is going to be something that's sturdy that you're going to be able to reuse season after season after season. This is not something that you throw away. This is a high quality piece of artwork. Now, you're also going to get these two little circles, and then you've got his two little hands. And if you'll notice, they are slightly different. There is a left and a right. And when I designed these, I designed them so that you know which one goes on which side. There is a method to my madness, believe it or not. So I've got my Surebonder hot glue gun already plugged in, and I'm not using the tough sticks today or the regular sticks. I'm actually using these wood sticks. This is my very first time to use these wood glue sticks, and I'm super excited about that. So just wanna put a little bit of hot glue. We don't wanna use a whole lot. I mean, just a very, very tiny bit. We're gonna put our little dots just on the edge of our outline. Can you see that outline? It's not quite touching it. It's just on that edge. Now we're gonna take, I'm 
glue his little hands on top of that. And if you need to, you can pick it up to make sure that it lines up properly. Okay. And y'all, that's all there is to put this together. All right, so the first color I want to start off with is going to be my marshmallow white. I want to go ahead and paint his little beard first. Okay, so I've got all of the white, and I think I want to add in a few shadows while this paint is still wet. So for that, I'm going to grab my cream, and I'll add a little bit more white. I don't want it to be really, really like a big difference. And I will tell you the first thing that I notice about the difference between the outdoor acrylics and the regular acrylics, the outdoor is much thicker. See the white is the outdoor and the cream is the regular. So just be aware that those outdoor acrylics are going to be quite a bit thicker. Okay, so I'll just add in just a little bit. I don't want a lot. I just kind of want him to have, just so everything is not one, one plain color. I want him to have a few little shadows and whatnot. You can always go back in with your white if some of it's too dark. That's the beauty with paint. If you don't like it, you just paint over it. Next, I want to add in a little bit of gray. So I'm just going to wash this out because I think I'm done with that. So let's grab some of our Battleship Gray. This is from the Outdoor Collection. And I also want to put some of my Charcoal Black, which is also from the Outdoor Collection. And both of these are fairly thick. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my brush to thin those down. I don't want, I don't want them to be that thick. Now let's add some to the gray. And it's totally up to you. If you want to sit down one day and paint the gnome and all of his accessories at one time, or if you want to maybe paint them month to month as the month is coming up, it's totally up to you. So now I'm just going to mix in some of that gray and that white, just for some shadows. Maybe just a little bit of black. I don't want to, I don't want it to be, you know, super, super dark. I do want him to be sort of light, but I want him to look sort of old. These fine brushes are really, really nice for getting into those details. I 
I'll admit I don't love that, so I'm just going to pick my, my big paintbrush back up and add a little bit more white to it. I don't like the way that looks. Now, that looks better. He was just a little bit too old. You know, you, that's, that's, like I said before, that's the great thing about paint. If you don't love it, just paint over it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that for now. So I'll go ahead and wash these colors out of my brushes. And next I wanna go in with my papaya whip. This is pretty. And you can make your gnome any color you want to. Let's see what this color looks like. That's pretty good for a skin tone. You might could use just a little bit pinker undertone if you wanted to mix that in too. We'll see what it looks like after it dries. And if we decide we wanna change the color, guess what? We'll just paint over it. He's looking pretty cute. So next I'm gonna go in with my Persian green and I'm gonna paint his hat. Now, I plan on painting his shoes black, but if you wanted to, you could totally paint his shoes the same color. But I want mine to be just a little bit different. Ooh, this color is so pretty. I'm so excited to use this one. I love it. Now, if I wanted to make this Persian, what was the color? Persian green. I wanted to make it just slightly lighter, so it was more of a lighter turquoise. All I would have to do would be to add some of the cream or some of the white to that. Now, when you paint your gnome, when you get to the edge, if you paint like this, your paint may drip over to the side. But if you'll start in the center and pull out and sort of pick up as it hits that edge, then it's not going to get any paint on that edge there. Can you see that? So you've got a nice clean edge. So that's just a little tip for you. And again, if you wanted to, if you wanted your edges to be that same color, then you could go and paint them. But I designed them so that it would save you time by not having to paint the edge black. Okay, so I'm gonna let this Persian green dry and I might need to go back with a second coat, but we'll just see what it looks like after we're done. So now I'll take my black and I'll paint his little shoes.
I like using one of these flat sort of angled brushes for this because you can really get in there into the little cracks and crevices with it. Okay, he is almost done. Now you can see that I did get a little bit of my white paint. So while I've got my black on my brush, I'll just cover that up. What can I say? I'm not perfect. Okay, he's looking really, really cute, but he is not done yet. I want to outline around his nose with a thinner brush. And I also want to add in just a little bit of detail after I put a second coat on his hat. I kind of want to give him like a little, kind of like a little dirty spot on his hat, but that's totally up to you if you want to do that or not. I just think it's a cute little detail. Okay, so I'm going to go in with my spot brush again. I just want to outline. I don't want it to be perfect. Like, I don't want my line to be perfect. I kind of want it to have that messy look. Y'all know that look that I like when I paint. When you try to make it perfect, it, that's too much, too much pressure. This is the outdoor paint again, so it's kind of thick, so I'm just going to water it down just a little bit. There. Look at that nice, sharp tip. Just use sort of a sketching motion. You don't have to try to stay perfectly in the lines. I mean... Of course you can if you want to, but. I like the messy look. Okay, so that blue is drying pretty good. I may not have to do a second coat. So let me go ahead and make his little, his little place on his hat. And that's it. Y'all, the gnome is done, and now we can move on to his accessories. Okay, so the first ones we're gonna paint are gonna be January, February, March, and April. Now, most of these are gonna just be one color, easy peasy, nothing fancy unless you want to. So I'm gonna paint the snowflake with our silver. I'm gonna paint the heart with our scarlet red. Our four-leaf clover, I'm going to paint with the lizard green. And I'm going to do a white for the Easter egg. And then I'm going to go back with our acrylic markers and sort of paint in some details. And I think I want to use white instead of cream. So I want to start off with the egg first. So that, whoops, I am all thumbs today. So I want to start off with the egg first, so this can start drying, and then I'll paint these, and then I can go back and paint the details. So I'll just give a coat of white paint to our Easter egg. And if you want to do a solid color, you can. I think it would be really pretty just to do one solid, maybe bright pink, but I'm having a fit to use these fine tip paint pens. So that's why I'm going to add in some details. And because this is the outdoor paint, it's going to be super quick drying. So I'll get that smooth. And then I'll just lay it to the side so that it can dry. And we'll go in with our scarlet red for our heart. You could even come back in with your paint pens 
and write a message, or if you even wanted to do it with your pastel colors, you could make it like the conversation hearts, the little, you know, the little candy hearts. That would be super cute too. But honestly, I'm just going to leave mine plain red. I like the look of that. And I think the red with the turquoise is going to look really, really nice. The snowflake, after it dries, I'll probably go in and add some details to it as well. For now, I'm just going to paint it solid. Okay, so I'll let that one dry. Now let's go in with our lizard green. I love the names of these. Isn't that cute? That really is like the perfect four leaf clover color. Okay. Okay, so now we've got May, June, Ju July, and August. Now we're going to get into a little bit more um, technique, I guess you could say. I think for my little tulip here, I'm loving this shocking pink color. I actually have some in my top here, so I'm just going to use that. Okay, now that I've got my shocking pink flower painted, I want to paint the stem with that same lizard green. That lizard green is really, really nice. I like it a lot. So cute. Okay, I'm going to set that over there to dry. So let's paint the ice cream cone next. And I want to go for a sort of a mint chocolate chip color. I'm going to go with some celery green. But this is not going to be minty enough for me, I don't think. So I'm going to add in some of that lizard green and see if we get more of a mint green color. That's looking pretty minty. So that was probably three parts of the celery green to one part of the lizard green. That's pretty minty. Let me lighten it up just a hair. So I'm going to put just a tiny bit of white in there with it. I just love to mix colors. Okay, that looks pretty minty to me. So, let's paint our ice cream. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. In the meantime, I'm going to grab one of my flat brushes that has a point on it, and I'm going to paint the cone. I'm going to try to add some of this Dijon color, and let's see what that looks like. It might not be the color that I'm going for. I might have to add a little bit of brown to it, but that's okay. We'll just see what it looks like. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of too yellow. So let's grab some burnt sienna and add to it. Yeah. 
that's still not quite as golden as I want. It's a little bit too dark still. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. Okay, I'm kind of digging that color. So we're going to go in with it. And again, I like my little flat brush with that chisel tip on it. These are Royal and Lang Nickel brushes. And I believe I got these at Michael's. If I had been thinking, I would have painted the cone first. So now I want to add more brown. I want to add some lines to it. And again, I could do this with my paint pen, but I want to do it while my paint is wet because I don't want it to have like a stark line to it. I just want it to be sort of a like a hint. I've actually gotten most of the paint off of my brush. See, I just want that faint hint. Of our ice cream cone. So stinking cute. Now actually to get that dark dark chocolate chip color I'm gonna mix a little bit of black in with this burnt sienna. And my black has already dried up. These are super quick drying paints. I want this to be like a dark, dark, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is my So now I'll just go and put some chocolate chips. Okay, another one done. So next we're gonna do our firecracker. And for this one, I know I want to do red, white, and blue. So I'm going to grab that same scarlet red that I used on the heart. That's a really pretty color. I've got my marshmallow white. And then I'm going to grab this really pretty cerulean blue from the <laughs> cerulean blue from the classic hues set. Aren't those pretty? And I'm going to need a color for the fire. So while I've got the electric yellow out, I might as well use that since it's already on my palette here. Maybe I want to add in a little bit of orange for the flames. So I've got some of this Tangelo from the Outdoor Acrylic Colors. And I'll just use what's in this top right here. So I'll blend a little bit of that in with my yellow. And watch what we're going to do. Just pull some of that orange through. If you get too much of the orange, just pick up some more of your yellow. looking cute. Next I'm going to use my cerulean blue and just paint 
my rocket here. You can do the whole thing blue or you can do like I'm doing and I'm going to leave the top unpainted because I want to paint that red. It would be really cute after it's dry to go back in and paint like USA or even paint stripes on it. It would be really cute. I might do that. Paint my white stripes. represent the flag. That's a really nice blue, you guys. This is the cerulean blue. Ooh, I like that a lot. Okay. Now, after this dries, I'll take my white and I'll put my stripes on my blue and I might even put a star or two on the end. What do you think? Super, super cute. Okay, I'm going to move this one so that it can dry. So next we want to paint our watermelon and again, if you want yours to be, I don't know, a lemon wedge, guess what? All you gotta do is paint it yellow. And then after this is dry, we'll go back in and we'll add our little seeds. Actually, we can probably do it now. I don't think there's any harm in it smearing. So I've got my spot brush again. Now I want to go back in with that celery green. And again, I'll go back with this lizard green because it's such a pretty color. And I'm going to go back and just blend those two together so that the line is not so harsh. Okay, there's our little watermelon done. Okay, so now we're going to do September, October, November, and December. And I'm going to use some of this burnt sienna as well as the color we used in our ice cream cone for our little, our little acorn here. So stinking cute. I'm going to grab the liner brush and the color that I used for, let me wet this a little bit. The color that I used for the mint chocolate chip, I want to just make some lines for the top of, let me line this first just a little. Love the little acorn. That might be my favorite one. All right, now let's move on to our little pumpkin. I think I'm going to use this pretty tangelo color. That's a pretty pump. I want to add in my lines. So I'm going to grab that flat pointed brush. And I want to do just like we did on the acorn. I don't want the line to be like so super obvious. I want it to blend. to do is to paint our stem and the pumpkins done. I'm 
Okay. Now, I'm so excited to paint this one. It is going to be so stinking cute. For this one, I'm going to use my Burnt Sienna. And I'm just going to paint the whole thing first. And that's like way too much paint. <laughs> So that's looking really good. Now, I can't finish this though until this part dries. So I will have to give it just a few minutes. So while that dries, I'll go ahead and paint my little gingerbread boy. But I need to, whoops, I need to lighten up this brown. I don't want him to quite be so burnt. I wanted more of a more of a lighter gingerbread color. Okay. I can probably go ahead and do the silver, so I think I will do that. While I've got the silver out, I'll go ahead and put another coat on here. Okay, so now on our little turkey, I've got this little bit right here. That's going to be the end of the drumstick. So I'm going to grab that cream colored paint and my liner brush. And just paint that in with that cream color. Do you see it yet? Don't worry, you will. Okay, so we only have one left. And then we'll go back and put the details on our other pieces. But I've got my cupcake here. That pink and purple and white. That's what I'm going to do with a red cherry. Isn't that adorable? So cute. Now, if I want to get a little bit fancy, I can go in with some black and do some lines for my cupcake liner. So cute. I love it. Now, let's go back while these two are drying. Let's go back to our Easter egg. So now comes the fun part. I've got my acrylic markers. These are the ones from Arteza and they're the fine point. These are brand new. So this is the first time that I have actually played around with them. So we've got turquoise, purple, pink, and yellow. So this one is already started, but let me show you how easy it is if, if you have not started those yet. So when you get your markers, the tips are going to be white. So let me show you how easy it is. You want to shake it, preferably with the top on. Touch your nib. Shake it a little more. And look, it comes down that easy. Again, shake it, touch your tip, and that one came down already, so we don't have to shake it again, but I am. I really appreciate the tips of these two. It's not like a fragile tip, 
So even when you push down on it, it actually makes an indention. So you're not gonna lose that fine tip. So our egg is dry. And let's just, let's go in with maybe some polka dots. Pretty much decorate your Easter egg any way your little heart desires. This is just something I thought of on the fly. I don't absolutely love it, but guess what? If I don't, I can always paint over it or I could flip it over onto the back and make it be something else completely. I really do love these pens though. They work exceptionally well, and the nibs on them are plastic, so that means it's not like a felt tip where it's going to wear down. They're actually plastic, so they're going to last a really, really, really long time. And another thing that I really love about these, besides the fact that they dry super, super fast, they are very low odor. They're not like some other paint pens. They don't have a really bad smell. I don't even smell it at all. Okay, so stinking cute. Okay, let's see if this is almost dry. Okay, that looks like it's pretty good. So I'm going to go in with the Space Black paint pen. I could do this with my paintbrush, but... I don't want to mess it up. This is our turkey leg and I don't want it to be messed up. I want it to be a super, super fine line. So we're going to draw our drumstick on here. And there's our turkey. Isn't that fun? I am going to outline it just a little bit. Not a whole lot. I just want it to pop. Okay, and there's our turkey. Isn't it cute? All right, now for our little gingerbread boy. I think I want to see if I can get this red to show up. This is called True Red. Let's see if it's going to show up on our gingerbread. I want to give him a little red bow tie. That shows up really nice, actually. hope it's dry enough. If not, I'll know in just a second. I'm going to take our white. Actually, this has not been started yet either. I told you all these are brand new. I 
and we're just going to give him some little squiggles. His little buttons. And we've got to give him his little eyes and his smile. How cute is he? Oh my goodness. I love him. Okay. So the only thing left to do is our rocket. This is our firework. I want to try to draw a star. And I'm going to do it the old school way. Well, that turned out really good. I'm kind of impressed. Honestly, I can't figure out which one is my favorite. Okay, after I put my little cupcake into my little gnome, I realized I probably should have outlined it if I did it white because his beard is white. So I'm just going to take my little black paint pen and just ever so slightly outline that edge. I just want it to be seen. I guess I should have done it pink. But guess what? I can always go back and do it. Now. That shows up better. Maybe I'll go back and paint it yellow. <laughs> okay, so let's... Let's change them out one by one so you can see. Oh, in case you did not know, our little gnome also has an available gnome home. And let me show you how cute this is. All you gotta do is open his little house and all of his little accessories fit right inside. And when you're done, you just close this little door and lock it back. Isn't that too stinking cute? does it for today's video y'all if you enjoyed it be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that would mean the world to me and if you have not already grabbed your gnome set be sure to check out my website down below it's www.mamadarestdiy.com shop until next time happy diy y'all